today we're going to be looking at big blind versus under the gun uh under the gun open versus big blind so we looked at big blind versus button today we're going to be looking at big blind versus under the gun we're gonna have a little more structure today um i spent probably like three to four hours studying the these spots over the last couple of days we're gonna look at five different flops and how we versus small bets how we play versus big bets we might do a brief compare of how these flops play a bit different when when we are playing against a button c bet but uh yeah a lot of eye eye-opening stuff i learned a lot studying this on my own and today's just going to be kind of a summary of what i did on my own you know how i do a lot of my study sessions on my own so hopefully you guys enjoy you guys seem to enjoy the last session so today we're going to be doing big blind versus under the gun it's gonna be a lot more peel work some spreadsheet work and then next week we're going to get into um hand examples real hand examples and then the following week uh will be kind of cool um i'm doing a hand history review with jonathan little on youtube i think uh it's going to be a uh, review. I won a circuit ring the other day. So we're going to do a hand history review of that in two weeks, two or three weeks. So, um, all right. Uh, thank you, Soma. So, um, could you throw something up on PC on how to make the PO Excel sheets? Yeah, I've had a few people. We're probably going to uh, do an app do a webinar on how to do aggregate reports. That will probably be another one that we we uh, start to look at. So, all right, um, speaking of aggregate report spreadsheets, first thing we're gonna do here is look at a spreadsheet. Uh, this is gonna be under the gun eight opens, big blind calls, 40 big blinds effective. We check and we face a big bet. So this is going to be a 67 two-thirds pot bet from the imposition player. And this is an aggregate report of what we are doing versus the big bet from the big blind. We'll just spend a few seconds looking at here. Uh, I note here the MDF is 67 divided by 167. Uh, so our fold frequency is 40%. Our MDF is one minus that, so 60%. Um, as you can see here, overall, we're folding 56%. We should only be folding 40. So as expected from the big blind, we're going to be vastly overfolding our MDF, uh, facing it under the gun open, uh, calling 34%. And then we have two raise sizes here. One is a 2.5x raise size, and then one is a 4x raise size. And you can see here we really just do the 4x raise sizing versus this large CBET. We only really use the small sizing. Uh, only a couple things I wanted to point out on the spreadsheet first before we actually get into hands. Um, First, I have it filtered for the flops that we defend the most. So this is the lowest frequency fold flops. You see these are all flops around 40%, so we're actually clearing an MDF. And if you look, pretty common pattern on these flops. They're all nine high and below, 10 high, 10 high, nine and below, nine and below, and they're all mostly straight boards. So 865, 65 deuce, 975, 874. Uh, some nine disconnected flops like 963, um, 984. So these lower flops are going to be the ones that we can defend the most on. And unsurprisingly, uh, I'll ask this, what are the flops we're going to overfold the most? What types of te flop textures will we be overfolding the most from the big blind versus under the guns, large C bet? I see high cards, Broadway cards, paired boards, a side connected, high Broadway cards. Yep. Pretty good. A lot of good, uh, answers here. Let's filter. Highest folds are, well, we have these trip boards, um, a lot of paired boards, high pair, high pair, high pair, high pair, high pair, Broadway straight board, and then these ace with a high card. So ace, queen, six, ace, king, jack, ace, 10, seven, ace, king, queen, ace, 10, three, ace, queen, nine, ace, king, eight. These are a lot of the flops we're overfolding a lot, ace, king, nine. So uh, ace plus a high card and paired boards, these are the flops that we're overfolding a lot, big blind versus under the gun. So let's take a look first. The first flop I want to look at, and this is going to be kind of our case study flop, is going to be 963 with a flush draw. Let me pull up the right. That's not what we want. Uh, that's not what I want. Nope, it's going to be the last one I look up. So 
All right, here we go. This is under the gun eight versus big blind, 40 big blinds. So 40 big blinds, under the gun versus big blind. And the flop we're going to look at first is this flop. 963, kind of look at a low disconnected flop with a flush draw. And I want to just talk about how we have to, how this flop's going to play. And we can start to look at how we go about defending this flop as the out of position player. So first, let's just see what the in position strategy is really quick. This is a big blind webinar. We're not going to go into the in position strategy really quick, but it will help us a little bit. Uh, in position is supposed to be um, the betting pretty often, 80% of the time, but they're mostly supposed to be using the large sizing here. And they use this large sizing because they have a very, very big over pair advantage, 9x advantage. Um, all their hands have like two over cards. So they're just leveraging uh, this low disconnected board to get a lot of money in with their over pairs and top pair hands. And uh, the the larger size in here, this uh, two thirds pop bet is used a lot more compared to the small bet. So we're gonna start off by looking at versus a large bet, what we're gonna do as the imposition player. And I'm gonna, Close this really quick so you guys can't cheat. And we're gonna be looking mostly at the range explorer today. And this is gonna be why I like to use this tool a lot. Um, and what we're gonna do here is click by strategy. I'm gonna get my note sheet up. Uh, let's see here. Is this the one I want? Yeah, okay. So we'll kind of work through here. This is a note sheet I've already made. This is one that I made on my own. So you guys can, some people asked about wanting to kind of see a note sheet, what type of notes I'm taking as I study this stuff. So um, we kind of looked at this a little bit. I'll just go over it. So big blind versus under the gun, 40 big blinds, big blind check, under the gun bet 67% of the pot. Uh, we're overfolding MDF. We're really only using the small raise size a lot. This is global. Um, frequencies, highest fold boards. We looked at high pair boards in ace plus big card. The lowest fold boards were all like nine and below, low connected board. Um, and these are the boards that we're defending a lot. And this is the flop we're going to look at. And we're going to just, we're going to focus on, instead of looking at this crazy strategy here, we're going to focus on hand classes and how we play different hand classes because then we can start to learn patterns and um, compare them on different board types. So, um, First question I want to ask, we're facing a large bet here on 963. We're just going to go down the list here. You see we have sets 1.5% of the time. Um, what do you guys think we're doing with our sets on this board? Are we going to be mostly check raising them? Are we going to be mostly calling them? Clearly, we're never going to fold with the set. Uh, but do we want to be mostly raising or mostly calling with our sets here? 963 under the gun versus big blind. So you see some people saying check raise. Some people say mostly check raising. Some people say mostly calling. Can someone say why? Why are we mostly calling or why are we mostly check raising? Why are we mostly calling? Why are we mostly check raising? Calling to keep them in the hand, pretty dry board. Doesn't interact with calling uh, the under the gun range. So I think you guys are thinking too much about the under the gun range rather than your own range to answer this question. So I like Alex's answer a lot. So a lot of people are saying we should check raise because there's a flush draw on the board. Some people are saying we should check call because the, uh, it doesn't connect with the under the gun player's range. Uh, some people are saying that we should um, check call to protect our range. Um, a lot of the reason, and I'll show this here. I'm going to click sets over here. And if you can see here, pocket nines, pocket sixes, pocket threes here. If you see here, 99.5% call. We're never check raising with our sets here. And the reason we're not check raising really has very little to do with the under the gun player's range. It has to do with our range. And if you look here on the right, we only have a set 1.5% of the time. We only have two pair 1.2% and we only have an over pair 1.5%. Heck, we only even have top pair 14% of the time. And the reason we're just calling with our sets is because our range is so weak that if we just start check raising all our strong hands, we're going to be really hard pressed on turns and rivers. 
Um, so a lot of the reason we're check calling with our sets has to do with the fact that we just don't have, we only have better than top pair 4% of the time. And we only have top pair of better 14% or 18% of the time. So because we have such a weak range, we're going to be calling a lot with some really, really, really strong hands. And you're going to see the same with two pairs here. We have a two pair 1.2% of the time. So we have nine, six suited, nine, three suited, six, three suited. These are only suited combos. So there's only uh, six combos of these. And if you look here, we're just calling again. We're not check raising with our two pairs. The reason again is has to deal with how weak our range is and we really lack really strong hands. So we're going to call with our really strong hands that don't need a lot of protection. Does that mean I have to check call all draws too? No. Kelly said, if I'm in the big position and the big blind calls my C-bet, my radar should go up. I would say no, actually. I would say the opposite because I think most people are check raising with their sets on this board. Most people check raise when they have 9-3 suited. Most people check raise when they have 6-3 suited. Pocket nines, if they check raise all of their sets and all their two pairs, what are they left with on turns and rivers? Not a lot of really strong hands. So I would actually argue the opposite, that when they check call, I'm probably going crazy on a lot of turns because they're not protecting their range accordingly. Um, over pairs on this board, what are we doing with our over pairs? So um, let's look at the preflop range really quick. Let me show you uh, our preflop ranges really quick. Um, so out of position here, we have like a little bit of pocket queens, a little bit of pocket jacks, like most of the pocket tens and all the pocket nines. Other hands were pretty much three betting. Um, so what do we, we have like queens, jacks, and tens here some of the time. What are we doing with those hands on the nine, six, three flop here? Now we're check calling with our sets and our two pairs. What are we doing with most of our um, over pairs here? Are we calling or are we check raising? Good. Seems like a lot of people are just getting that. So a lot of people are saying we're check raising to deny equity, check raising for protection. Yep. So this might seem, I see, I saw like a couple of people change their answers where they were saying they would check raise the sets in two pairs. And now they're saying call with the over pairs. If you look here at the over pairs, uh, why did this freeze? There we go. Close that. So um, our over pairs here, you see, we're pretty much pure check raising. And the reason we're check raising with these over pairs on 9.63 from the big blind is, keep in mind, this is versus the big bet. The reason is we're, we're check raising with them is they need protection on like nine sixes and threes. With queens, jacks, and tens, we have to worry about an ace coming out, a king coming off. Uh, these are hands now that are really strong now that we want to get the money in now while we still can, while they're really, really strong hands. So this is a very common pattern. You'll see that we, we, we fast play these over pairs. We slow play a lot of our sets in two pairs um, when our range is really weak here from the big blind versus under the gun. Now with top pair here, we're 40 big blinds deep. Um, are we gonna be doing any check raising with nine X on this nine, six, three flop? Are we gonna be doing any check raising versus the big bet with nine, six, three? And if so, what combos? Okay, I like John's answer. I like Selma's answer. I like Colin's answer. I like Alan's answer. So if we look at our top pairs here. I guess I should have asked wherever folding a, a nine here, but I don't think anyone's going to fold the nine here. So uh, if you see here, we're mostly just calling. The green is call. The red is raise. And a lot of green here, we're just calling. But if you notice here, ace nine, we, we you know, ace nine stronger that we just decide to raise it in. Uh, if, if they comply, we go ahead and check raise, get it in. Most of the king nine here little bit of check raising with king nine, but then mostly calling. These ones over here are all with plus draws, so nine X of spades, nine eight of spades, nine seven of spades. These are all check raising with the nine X and the spades, but mostly just calling with any of our, any of our top pair. Um, under pair, so that's gonna be on this board, pocket eights and pocket sevens. Do we ever fold pocket eights or pocket sevens here to a big bet on the flop? Are we ever gonna fold with pocket eights or pocket sevens?
What if we check raise with a nine and we get in shot down? We are not folding. Nope. Once we check raise with top pair, we're not folding. All right. So everyone's saying no, they don't fold pocket eights. They don't fold pocket nines. Um, there's actually a decent amount of folding here with eights and nines. So if you look here, um, pocket eights without a spade, we're actually folding about half the time. They're completely indifferent between like fold, call, and raise. With a spade even, it's not worth a ton. Same with pocket sevens here. Pocket sevens is a pure fold with no spade. So a lot of people are like, I don't like folding. I don't like calling. It's actually like versus this big bet here, pocket sevens, no spade, just hitting the muck right away. We're versus a tight under the gun range. And it's really, we have very, very, very little playability with the eights and sevens. And if you look here, sevens, no spade, pure folding. Sevens with the spade, there's even, it's mixing a little bit of fold, mostly calling. And then eights with the spade, there's even a sliver of folding there. These hands are just not worth very much. Um, and this was something that I was a little bit surprised from that I learned that I'm probably calling too many big, big C bets, um, uh, with pocket sevens and pocket eights, uh, on this type of board. And I think population, like you guys all answered, no, that you were calling with eights and sevens. And right away that like leads me to an exploit when I'm betting in position, like I use the big, I want to use the big bet a lot larger because, they're continuing like populations continuing way too wide to these large bets and they're making pretty big mistakes. And what Alexander just said is perfectly correct. We'd rather call six X than eight, eight and seven, seven. Um, we're going to look at small C bets in a second there. Dara, so we'll answer that question in a second. Why would we want to rather call a six X hand than eight, eight and seven, seven. So we'll, we'll look at six X now. I guess I'll ask, are we ever folding a six? Do we ever fold a six on this flop to a big bet? Are we ever folding a six? Yep, what Chris just said, six X has um, six X has more outs to improve than sevens and eights. And also six X blocks pocket sixes, it blocks eight six, it blocks some of the value hands from the imposition player. So if you look here, we're never folding with a six. We're pretty much just pure call, never raising. Um, never raising with it. You see of this um six five and seven six where they have three to a straight and a spade blocker there's a little bit of raising that's very common you see pair plus three to a straight are raising a decent amount um so third pair here what are you guys doing with uh pocket fives with the spade on this flop fives with the spade what are you doing pocket fives with a spade And then are we folding, what are we doing with um, king three of hearts? What are we doing with king three of hearts? Are, are we folding any three X on this flop? Okay, so let's look at third pair now. So if you see here, all right, pocket fives and pocket fours, pure folds. There's a little bit of raising. Um, and then if you see here, we're never folding a pair of threes. The same concept with these hands, we have five outs versus these hands, we only have two outs. And with these hands, we block sets. We also block some of their value hands like ace three. And so uh, we're never folding a three on this flop. Okay, nine, six, three. Versus the, this is versus the big bet. Okay, and then low pair, I want to ask, I think we figured that out. Pocket deuces, we're just folding right away. Um, what are you guys doing with um, ace jack of hearts on the slot? Ace jack of hearts, what are you doing? Nine, six, three. One diamond, two spades. Ace jack of hearts, what are we doing? And then what are you doing with um, ace of clubs, tennis spades? Okay. A lot of people are saying call. And then what are you doing with uh, ace of spades, eight of diamonds? What are you doing with ace of spades, eight of diamonds? All right, the first three answers were fold, call, and race. That means I, I made a good question. So most people are saying call with ace of spades, eight of diamonds. Okay. 
let's take a look here at some of these ace highs, what we're doing here. So we're folding a lot of our ace highs. You see here, we're folding 67% of our ace highs. Um, I asked here, ace jack of hearts to peer fold. Even ace jack of diamonds is starting to mix fold. Ace jack of diamonds we're calling with, ace jack of hearts is just a pure fold. Why are we folding pocket eights and pocket sevens, but not folding a pair of threes? Uh, the reason is, is that a pair of threes and pocket eights are almost the same hand in terms of under the gun really only opens like pockets. They open pocket fives, pocket sevens. Like we beat a few of those hands with eights. But the thing is, is we have five outs to improve with a hand like king three, but we only have two outs to improve with a pair of eights. But they both need the same protection and they both be almost all the same hands that the under the gun player opens. Um, so if you see here like ace queen, uh, clubs and hearts are mixing fold and call already. So they're indifferent. And uh, for example here, ace jack is kind of the breaking point where we now we can only call with ace jack of diamonds. And then ace 10, we just lose the diamonds. So like ace jack of diamonds is a call ace 10. Like that means ace jack of diamonds probably isn't worth very much here. So a big thing you're going to notice is that people overvalue their backdoor flush draws versus big bets. Uh, when you're facing a really big bet, your backdoor flush draws go down a lot in value. So if you see here, all these ASEX hands are just folding ASEX of diamonds here on this flop. Um, is that because you can win at showdown with ace queen? Well, you're going to win at showdown with ace queen almost as much as you do with ace jack. It just has to do with the minimum defense of how many hands it wants to try to defend. Um, ace queen's just deemed a little bit. Obviously, we want to defend ace queen before ace jack, and it's taking ace queen of hearts before ace, you know. Yep, this is versus a two-thirds pot size bet. And then we'll look at a small bet, and then we'll move on to a few different flops. Uh, on the offsuit side here, I asked about the ace of hearts, 10 of spades. Um, if you look here, we're just folding with the 10 of spades in our hand even. Um, sometimes we check raise it with like ace of diamonds, 10 of spades. We'll check raise a decent amount, but we're just folding. We really only continue if we have the ace of spades, ace of spades, jack. And then if you see here, when we have the jack of spades, now it's kind of close. And then all these ace queen offs are kind of called. But um, and then I asked here about ace of spades, eight. and um, it's really worth zero chips. It's mixing call, call and fold, like these ace, eight, and eight, sevens. They're pretty weak hands. Um, so like even a ace of spades, five is pretty much just folding. It check raises sometimes. So we're playing pretty tight uh, with these ace highs. We don't have to do anything. Like we call ace queen, basically. Some of these ace jacks with a spade, and that's about it on these ace high hands. And then with king high, we'll just go through this really quick. Um, Again, king queen suited. We just call a king queen of diamonds. We don't call king queen of hearts or king queen of clubs. Uh, king queen offsuit, we only call with the spade. And then like king jack, we just call when we have like the king of spades. Sometimes when we have the jack of spades, but that's kind of the breaking point. And then like king 10, like even with the king of spades, like it's basically worth nothing uh, with king 10 with the king of spades. And uh, we'll look really quick at our flush draws, how we're playing them. Um, so we're raising about a quarter of our flush draws and we, we call about three quarters of our flush draws. The ones that we're raising, it's actually pretty easy to figure out here. If you look here, it's a lot of these ones with a five in it, like a five or a four or a seven. So like three to a straight. So this is nine, six, three. So like King five of spades, queen five of spades, ace four of spades, ace five of spades. These ones that can turn straight draws, um, ace deuce of spades has a backdoor wheel draw. Uh, ace seven of spades has three to a straight King seven of spades. Otherwise, we do a lot of calling with our flush draws. They're all mostly just calling. Uh, but we're only raising like a quarter of our flush draws. Um, eight out straight draws to open enders, just pure calling. We're, never, we're not check raising these hands. And the reason we're not check raising them is because we have our flush draws to check raise. And we'd rather check raise with some of those like ace of spades, eight, eight of diamonds, or like ace of clubs, 10 of spades. We check raise with those more so than we do with these open ended straight draws. And um, these four out, these gut shot hands, we're starting to fold some of these, like 10 of clubs, we just start to fold here. 
uh, 10 eight of spades. What are we doing with that? Um, I think we're mostly calling. So you see this a lot of times, like the big combo draws, a lot of the time just end up calling because they're way too strong. And we'd rather check raise in a more polarized fashion. So a lot of times you see that these big combo draws end up just calling. Um, and then we, we end up folding a lot of these gut shots, like 10, seven of clubs, 10, seven of hearts, 10, eight, um, check raise some of this, like, so this is what I'm talking about. More polarized, like 10, eight with the 10 of spades. We end up check raising a lot versus like 10, eight of spades. We just call with. So, um, The best value we check raise is ace nine. Well, we have some ace nine. We also have some pocket tens, some pocket jacks, some pocket queens. Uh, we also have um, like a little bit of merge, like nine eight and nine seven. We were check raising a little bit, some of this top pair in here. But it's a lot of like our check raising range is a lot of, it's only 7%. So we're not check raising much, but it's mostly over pairs, top pairs, um, and then some of these polarized bluffs. That's kind of what our check raising range looks like here. So um, key concept here versus a big bet on 963 versus that tight under the gun range. We're playing pretty tight. We even fold pairs like pocket eights and pocket sevens get folded a lot. Um, we end up um, folding a lot of our ace highs. We really, even some of our backdoor flush draws, like queen, jack of diamonds, we just fold right away. And uh, this is going to be pretty common. And as we go across flops, we're going to notice this. Now, we're going to look really quick. What do we do against a small bet size? So we're gonna now we're going to look when we face a small bet of one-third pot instead of two-thirds pot. So um, what's going to happen? What's going to be the... Uh, main differences in our strategy facing that small bet rather than the big bet what's going to be the main strategy main differences? there's gonna be a few uh few things so someone says call more yep lewis says check raise more i agree with that those are both we're going to check raise more calling wider and check raising more backdoor straights and flushes call more yep i would agree with all of those statements good you guys are picking up on that so if you look before we were check raising seven percent now we're check raising 17% versus a small bet. We're going to fold less. We were folding 40%. Now we're only folding 27%. So let's just, we're going to go through this a little bit quicker, but we'll look now. Uh, what do you think we're doing with our sets? Do we still check call them or are we going to check raise them more versus the small bet? So most people are saying still check raise, stuck, still check call them um so mostly we're now we're more of like a 50 50 mix we still check call them a lot um but we do check raise a little bit more now with our sets we're check raising them about half the time versus the small bet versus the big bet we were check raising them never so a little bit uh we were check raising them more against the big bet or sorry more against the small bet uh two pair you see the same thing now we're check raising them about half the time again mostly the nine six and the six three you see this top and bottom pair nine three ends up check calling that's pretty common uh that top and bottom pair ends up being the one that always wants to check call any reason we check race nine nine more than six six uh i'm guessing because the under the gun player the reason we check raise nines a bit more is because the under the gun player raises with sixes preflop, but not pocket threes. So nines can cooler pocket sixes, but pocket sixes cannot cooler pocket threes because um, the under the gun range doesn't have pocket threes in it. So that's why that's going on there. Uh, are we check raising with sets more now because we need to make the pot bigger? Uh, to get all the money in it has to do with that they're check raising a more linear when they bet small they're betting a little bit more linear in practice how do you implement betting 50 percent of the time i mean i'll just you can either use a random number generator or you can use some type of uh, reads on your opponent to make a decision uh, like if they have a stronger betting range then you should just check as always if they have a weaker betting range then you can you know either randomize or just kind of realize that you should not be doing it all the time um over pairs still check raising nothing changes there what are we going to do with top pairs are we going to check raise more or less with top pair now versus small c bet
Good. Yep. Versus smaller C bets, we're gonna check raise a lot more top pair. So if you look now, now like Ace Nine's getting check raised a lot. Like these King Nine suiteds, Nine X with a flush draw get check raised a lot more. A um, lot more check raising. Some of this King Nine gets check raised more. And then you see a lot of this stuff like nine seven suited, nine five suited, nine four suited. These nine X that need more protection. So like nine seven needs a lot more protection than King Nine. And the reason is now a king is not a bad card, but for nine seven, all the over cards are still a bad card. So you see more check raising with some of these smaller top pairs that have uh, three to a straight. So like nine eight, nine seven, nine five, nine four. Uh, pretty common pattern you'll see across a lot of different situations. Um, How big of the sizing is it? So this is a 2.5x still. So still check raising 2.5x. All right, under pairs. So pocket eights and pocket sevens. Are we folding those hands now or are we, we calling with them? We were folding sevens, no spade versus a big bet. What are we doing with sevens, no spade versus a small bet here? We calling, what are we doing with that? We still folding it some? So uh, under pairs, yep. So we're never folding the sevens now. They actually get raised a little bit. Um, so we're at least continuing with a call or a raise with sevens or eights, get some protection. They also have outs against like pocket kings that the player can have. So we check raise these sometimes. Uh, second pair, never folding again, pure calling. Third pair, never folding. So pocket fives and pocket fours, now we call. Now we even call pocket deuces versus the small C bet. Um, what are we doing with uh, ace jack of hearts now? We call an ace jack of hearts, we still folding it. Ace jack of hearts versus small bet. So ace jack of hearts now is indifferent between call and fold. It's never raising. Uh, so most people are saying call and take a card off still, but like it's still worth like zero chips. Calling's fine, but we don't need to call every time, and especially against someone that doesn't see bet enough, probably just want to fold. Um, and you see like ace, 10 of hearts, we're still folding. And then these ones with the spade, you see here, this is where a lot of our check raises come from. Ace of spades, seven, ace of spades, five, ace of spades, four. These ace of spade combos with three to a straight are very, very common check raises. Same here with like king of spades seven, king of spades eight get check raised a lot. Um, king 10 with the 10 of spades, indifferent, mixing call and fold. And a um, little more aggressive with our flush draws, raising more of our flush draws now. Still mostly just calling, but check raising a little bit with our open unders. So, um, we have a few different flops that we want to get through today that we'll go through quicker than we did on this one. But uh, any quick questions on this 963 flop uh, before we move along to uh, our next uh, flop type? Where did my questions box just go? Oh, there it is. Okay, now I can see the questions again. Any other questions on this 963 flop before we move on to a different flop texture? Why are we folding queen, jack of diamonds, but calling with king 10? Uh, queen, jack of diamonds, we're calling with, we're calling most of the time with queen, jack of diamonds, and then king 10 to that. We're calling them the same, pretty much. They're pretty much equal value, but queen, jack of diamonds can turn a straight draw, an open ender with a 10 versus king 10 cannot. So um, queen, jack can turn straight draws that king 10 cannot. Five of diamonds, four. Um, I think we're just mixing. Uh, it will check raise sometime. Like it's check raising like half the time, five four with a diamond. But um, or sorry, with a spade. So like five of spades, four of diamonds is like a fifty percent. So a lot of a lot of people are like a hundred percent one way or the other, and your frequencies can get out of whack kind of quickly. See some of this stuff too, like jack of spades, jack ten with a spade, queen ten with a spade, check raising a lot here. These are common check raises. Again, three to a straight with a backdoor flush draw. So, all right, we're going to move on to the next flop. 
Uh, we're going to skip those until in case, because they play kind of similarly. 6-5 deuce, 8-7-3. They play pretty similarly to this 9-6-3. We'll come back to them if we have time. I want to go to this next flop. Um, we'll have some fun here. All right, we're going to look at this next flop, which is ace of diamonds, king of spades, jack of spades. Okay, so we're going to look at a completely different type of flop now. Three big cards. This is a flop. Uh, let's just look here really quick. Um, let me check. The imposition player bets both small and big here, uh, but they bet 100% of the time. If you see here, there's no checking from the imposition player. 2% check, so they're never checking. And they mix both a big bet and a small bet strategy. So we're going to look first at their big bet strategy, what we're doing here on this flop. And first off, we're folding 70% of the time, which is crazy. We're overfolding a lot. 70% here versus big bet on ace, king, jack. And we're going to go through the same drill we just went through, but on this ace, king, jack flop. So, all right. Same concept, same drill. We're going to go through it here. Different flop. Uh, straights. We have 2.6% straights here. Um, what are we doing with our straights? Now, obviously, that's just queen 10. Are we mostly calling, mostly raising, 50-50? What are we doing with our straights on this ace, king, jack flop? Raising, calling, what are we doing here? So kind of a mix. Some people are saying always raising. Some people are saying calling. This is the big bet. Uh, if we look here, our straights are mostly raising. Um, we're raising with our straights here like three, three-fourths of the time. And the only one we really call specifically want to call here is queen ten of spades and we need zero protection with queen ten of spades so that's why we're just mostly using that to call with but most of the other straights we're just raising with and i think that's pretty good to do um we don't block like pocket kings or pocket jacks or ace king any of their really strong hands they can get the money in with so most of our check raising range here is made up of queen ten um sets the only set we have is pocket jacks i'm not going to ask because we don't even have that much we're mostly calling Similar to that, we do a little bit of raising, similar to the other one. Uh, what are we doing with our two pairs on this flop? Are we mostly calling with them? Do we have a check raise with our two pairs? We have a lot of uh, ace jack, we have king jack, we even have ace king a tiny bit. Uh, are we mostly raising with our two pairs? Are we mostly calling? So most people are saying raise, okay? Uh, if you remember what we were doing last time, like we were mostly just calling with our two pairs. And I think it's going to be the same here. And if you see here, unless we have ace-king, which I have a, like a 10% range weight in this preflop range, like we raise with ace-king. But ba otherwise, king-jack, all these hands we just call with. And the reason we just want to call is they're not like locked hands to win this pot. There's a lot of bad things like any queen, any 10, any spade. Um, there's a lot of like rough cards and also our range is just not that strong that we want to keep some strong hands in our calling range. What is the biggest difference in betting when both equities have such a big gap between the, uh, I'm not sure if I fully understand the question, Lewis. Um, betting doesn't just have to do with equity advantage. It also has to do with, um, it has to do with also like how equity is distributed and also like the composition, like the net advantage. Uh, it doesn't just have to do with equity advantage. There's a lot of flops you have a 60% equity advantage, but you don't bet always. Like for example, like an ace king deuce flop because you don't need any protection. Uh, top pair. All right, are we ever gonna fold an ace on this flop versus big bet? Ace king jack, do we ever fold an ace? Most people are saying no. Most people are saying they never fold an ace. Uh, I'm not folding an ace, and I'm wrong. Uh, we actually fold a lot of aces on this flop. Uh, I learned a lot on this, studying this spot. So, and I think this is even better in practice because people are too greedy with their big bets. They tend to not like, 
let's look really quick at the imposition betting range really quick. So this has imposition betting big half the time, and they're betting big with hands like pocket eights, pocket sevens, pocket sixes, ace four clubs, queen nine suited. They're betting big with king eight suited as a bluff, like king eight of hearts. They're doing a lot of big betting, jack x. Like I don't think a lot of people are even bluffing this much with the big bet size. Um, and if you look, um, Here, even with this thigh that um, like hands like a seven off, no spade, just folding a eight off, no spade, folding a lot, ace five, no spade, folding a lot. These ace eight suited, like even like um, are just a lot of these weaker aces we're just folding a lot of. Um, not something that I was thinking that we were going to be doing a lot of. So uh, a lot of ace x versus big bet gets folded here a lot. And I think this is even better in practice. And I think this is a good exploit also when you're the in position player to be, be used a lot of big betting because I don't think anyone really is folding aces here on the flop. Like be honest, are you ever folding ace eight off in game versus a two thirds pot bet on ace king jack? Like don't lie, just be honest. <laughs> I don't think really anyone is. Like a lot of population is not. And so this is something to uh, uh, keep in mind for exploits. Are we not getting exploited in the long run folding ASX? No, because if you look here, this is when they're bluffing a ton. We're still supposed to fold ASX because we're at such a disadvantage on future streets. But if you think here, people don't even bluff that as much as they're supposed to here on the flop. So I think you're probably fine folding some of these ASX hands. So a lot of these top pairs. Um, what are you guys doing with um, King X? Are we folding a lot of King X or no? Are we folding Kings or no? What are you doing with uh, King Nine of Hearts? What are you doing with King Nine of Hearts? So most of you are saying fold to a big bet. Some people are saying call. We're folding 70% of our King X hands. This is like, this flop is so bad for us and it's so good for the under the gun player that we need to respect them. And this is why we're doing so much folding. If you look here, all King nine, even King nine of diamonds, which has a backdoor flush, pure folding. That's crazy. Every King X, even with a backdoor flush draw is mostly folding. Uh, we need like a immediate straight draw. Even King 10 is indifferent between call and fold. Pretty crazy. King nine off. Yeah, this is heads up though. Like three ways. Yes, I agree. This is an easy fold. But like I'm peeling too many King X hands here for sure versus large bet. And population is for sure as well. Um, do I even ask now, what are we doing with third pair? What are we doing with Jack X? What are you doing with Jack seven of hearts versus big bet? I hope you all stay fold now for folding all this King. <laughs> yeah. If you look here. Look at all this Jack X, just even Jack 10, which has a straight draw is like 80% folding. Yeah, we're folding all the Kings that don't have a straight draw. Yep. We call a little bit of King three, King deuce of diamonds because they don't block any bluffs from the imposition player, but like pretty crazy. Low pairs, pocket tens through deuces, just pure folds. Um, oh, are we folding any flush draws? Are we folding any flush draws on the flop? What are you doing with uh, seven, four spades? Yeah, 10 of spades continues in the jack 10. Seven, four spades, what are you guys doing versus big bet? Most people are saying call. A couple people are saying fold. Um, we're actually folding some flush draws to this large bet on this flop, which is pretty crazy. Like seven deuce of spades is like, versus zero chips. Seven, four spades is worth zero chips. When it mixes call and fold, that means it's worth nothing. Uh, a lot of these weak, really weak flush draws are just uh, 
mixing call and fold. The really low ones always call because they don't block the pairs that bluff, like pocket fives and pocket fours and pocket sixes. Seven, six of spades, just almost pure folds. Pretty crazy. Um, yeah. And then like, um, yeah, I'm never folding a flush draw here, but this is just showing you how much respect we need to give to the other gun player on this flop. Some of our check raises come from like these weak um, queen X hands, like queen X of spades. Um, some of these 10 five of spades are raising. So like queen X of spades, 10 five of spades, those are raising some of the time. But um, yeah, this flop was pretty crazy. Now let's look versus small bet and see what happens. Um, population uses a small bet a lot and let's see how our strategy changes versus small bet. So uh, versus small bet here, uh, straights, um, still mostly raising, but a little bit of calling with the uh, queen 10 straights. Um, sets, pure calling with jacks, just protecting our range. Two pairs, same thing. We're pretty much still just calling, not check raising. Um, top pair, are we going to fold any ace X to the small bet on the flop? Do we fold any ace X to small bet? 33% pot. So most people are saying no. I mean, I'm not. So we're not. Good. 0% fold the top pair. Uh, we raise, these are all flush draw ace X hands that we raise now. Um, all right. Do we fold any king X to a small bet? Are we folding any uh, second pair to small bet? So most of you guys are saying no, never. I think we're going to fold a lot of king X. I, I studied this yesterday, so I already know the answer. We're folding a lot of king X. We're still folding over half of our kings on this board. King forward, the, these are just with diamond backdoor flush draws. This is to a one-third pot bet, guys. King seven, king six, king four. King nine off, pure folding. King eight off, king seven off, just pure folding. We need a backdoor flush draw or a straight draw to continue with a king X on this ace-king jack board. It's a really, really bad board for us. Really good board for under the gun. Uh, we're folding a jack X. I mean, clearly we're folding jack X. Like, even jack nine of diamonds with a backdoor flush draw is just getting folded. Uh, a lot of jack X is folding. Jack 10 now can continue. Uh, still folding all these pairs. Pocket 10s starts to bluff raise now a little bit. But uh, 10s is even folding with a gut shot. Uh, not folding any flush draws. That's good to know. Queen X needs a flush draw to continue. So, uh, yeah, this flop is crazy. This ace king jack. Do you guys want to look at this versus button again? This ace king jack flop to see what we do if anything changes versus the button. All right, let's pull up versus button here. 40 big blinds since we looked at that last time. So this is button versus big blind, 40 big blinds. So the big difference here is now we have, we lose a lot of ace queen. We lose a lot of ace jack now that we had in the previous spot. We also lose pocket nines, pocket eights. Um, our range got a little bit weaker now on the button or in the big blind. Let's look here, uh, ace, king, jack. Okay, uh, check. Again, the imposition player uses this big bet a lot. So let's look at the big bet. They do have a checking range on this board. So let's see here. Um, okay, so straights. Um, again, we're raising about half the time. Uh, we don't have any sets on this board. Two pairs, ace jack, king jack. So we do raise some of our two pairs now, button versus big blind. This is still 40 big blinds. Uh, top pair. So we never fold an ace versus the button. Good. Um, are we going to fold any king X versus button? Big bet. Do we fold any king X? So we did. We folded like almost all our king X versus the under the gun player. Do we fold versus the button? Um, I think we're going to fold some King X. I don't think King X is going to be a pure continue here. 
so we do fold some but not much so like uh these king x's without a backdoor flush draw are indifferent so we're starting to fold some and then like these all these weak offsuit ones are all mixing and they're all indifferent so we fold like 20 percent of our kings what about jack x I think Jack X is going to be like pure fold without a backdoor. I don't think we're folding. I don't think we're calling a lot of Jack X here. Yeah. So this plays more like a King X before we need a backdoor flush draw. So these are all Jack X of diamonds. These all have, um, or sorry, a spade in it. So these are all Jack X with a spade. So we're folding now all our Jacks versus under the gun. We fold all our, our, our Kings. I'm too loose. So this is versus big bet. A lot of people call big bets way too much um, in, on early streets. And then we just fold all our pocket pairs. Um, never fold a flush draw. So folding a lot of queen X and 10 X. So that is versus button. Okay. Uh, what other flop do I want to look at? Um, This is 40 big blinds. I think this is like one of the best stack sizes to study. I don't think it's very important to study like a hundred big blind play in tournaments. Like it's important, but in terms of time and energy, I think you're much better off studying like 30 to 50 big blinds. Um, which flop of these do you guys want to see? Or do you have a different flop type that you want to see here? Um, let's look at ace, queen, six, rainbow. Actually, let's look at... Okay, someone said a paired board. All right, let's look at a paired board. Um, I'll pull up the spreadsheet and you guys can pick a paired board. Is there are one of these types of paired boards in particular. Let's find an interesting one versus. Uh, well, actually, this is versus big bet. That doesn't get, big bet doesn't get used much on paired boards. Uh, let's see here. Jack six six. All right, we'll look at Jack six six. Yeah, and then we'll look at Ace Queen six after this. So let's look at a paired board really quick. So um, uh, only small betting. This is under the gun versus big blind again. Under the gun versus big blind. Uh, a lot of checking from the under the gun player, which I think people bet too much on this board, probably. So we'll keep that in mind when we look at our strategy here, that people are C betting probably too much on this board um, from under the gun. They don't really have any sixes in their range, so they should be pretty respectful. So uh, check, bet small. This is our strategy. If you look here, um, we're folding about half the time. A lot of check raising and just a little bit of calling. So we're mostly check raising on this paired board here. So um, uh, quads, mostly check raise, cares about how to play quads. That's what I'm not here to teach you with. Calling with most of our full houses. Uh, trips, mostly, so a lot of people like to slow play here with their six X hands. I should have asked this. We're check raising them like 85% of the time. We don't slow play much with trips, okay? If you think that you're supposed to slow play with trips, you're wrong. Get money into the pot, check raise, start building a pot with your trips here. Uh, over pairs, we only have queens, we're check raising that. Uh, top pair here with jack x. How often do you think we're check raising with a jack here? Uh, yeah, this is all 2.5x check raising mostly. How often do you think we're check raising here with a jack? So I've seen always 50% and never. <laughs> that means I asked a good question. First under the gun, don't check raise. I'm going to say we check raise like um, probably a little bit over half our top pair. Perfect. 53%. So like ace jack, king jack, queen jack. So we're check raising a lot of our top pair. Um, these weaker ones we just mostly call. 
why are we check raising with trips but not check raising with a set of nines or sixes like before uh the reason we're not check raising with nines or sixes before is because our range was so weak and we didn't have many strong hands we, we had sets but that was only one percent of our range here we have trips over like eight percent of the time like we have a lot of really strong hands now like we have trips are better almost eight percent of the time whereas before we had trips are better like two percent so we have four times as many combos of really strong hands to choose from here and so it allows us to check raise more so um here uh, we're check raising a lot of our sixes, top pair, mostly check raising, check call a lot of our weaker ones, um, check calling with a lot of our under pairs, never pulling a pair of sevens here. Uh, why are we check raising a lot of these deuces, threes, fours, and fives? Why are these hands check raising instead of check calling? I think a lot of people just check call these hands. Why are we check raising? So someone says bluffing, someone says protection. But why, why are these hands that we want to bluff with? Why do we want to bluff with fives, fours, threes, and deuces? Because I don't think they're natural hands to bluff with. They benefit from folding out over cards. Yep, that's true. They need protection. That's true. Range advantage on a pair of six. That's true. That's not the main reason, though. No one's hit the main reason why these are good hands to bluff it with. Hand can't get any better on future streets. That's not true. We have the nut advantage. They don't block ace, king, queen, jack. We have more sixes in the big blind we can rep. No showdown value. No one's still heard, no one's still said the reason. Two outs to the nuts still. There we go, someone still got it. Alex, Alexander got the reason. There's not a lot of hands that have equity against pocket kings on this board. It's pretty hard to have, it doesn't have to do with balance. If the opponent has pocket kings, when we check raise, they're probably just going to call because we have so many sixes in our check raising range. And it's pretty hard to have a bluff that still has equity against pocket kings or pocket aces or pocket queens. Deuces, threes, fours, and fives, they benefit from folding out over cards, like people said, but they still have outs to beat pocket kings, beat pocket queens, beat a six suited, beat king six suited, beat seven six suited. We can still beat. Um, some hands in the impositions range by the river with some of these pairs. So that's why a lot of them they uses a lot of these hands on paired boards as bluffs. But not like we weren't using tens, nines, eights, and sevens. Those are strong enough to call. And then we were bluffing with some of those. That's what's going on there. I'm not saying that's necessary if you want to incorporate that or not, but I'm trying to explain what's going on here. Uh, ace highs, these are mostly flush draws, raising a lot here with the ace of spades. Ace of spades is almost like pure raising. So pretty much raising with all of our ace of spades combos. Pretty aggressive. Uh, and then um, a lot of these king x flush draws, king of spades combos are raising. Again, having an overcard to the jack is important. A lot of check raising on these boards. Is it raising with jack nine also a bluff? No, because when you raise with jack nine, they're going to call you with pocket sevens, pocket eights, pocket nines, ace king, ace queen. They're still going to call you with a lot of hands. So uh, we're going to look at ace, queen, six really quick. That was one of the other boards that I was looking at. And this is a rainbow board. So we haven't looked at a rainbow board yet. What's the biggest difference between a rainbow board and a two-tone board in our defending strategy? What's the biggest difference between a rainbow board and a two-tone board in our defending strategy? Overfolding more. Don't have many draws. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, so uh defending more with higher cards all right so ace queen seven rainbow or ace queen six rainbow in position still using a lot of this big bet so in under the gun you get to use a lot of really big c bets because you have really strong ranges so you're able to put more money into the pot so we're going to look at versus big bet again um and if you see here on ace queen six rainbow we're doing a ton of folding again Ace King Jack, it's gonna play a lot similar to this Ace King Jack board. So um doo -doo, sets. Now we're raising with our pocket sixes a lot. Um why are we raising more with sixes? On this rainbow board, sixes are just a little bit stronger um because of having no flush draw. So um 
Sixes are kind of like the only hand I think we check raise here really for value. We're only check raising 2% of our range here on this board. So we're not check raising much at all, 2%. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, ask this, if we're check raising pocket sixes as our, as our main value hand, if sixes are our main value hand, what are gonna be our main bluffs? What are gonna be our main check raise bluffs if we're check raising mostly there, we go. there you go. Salim got it right away. Salim's still the only one that's got it right. Colin got it right. Two people have gotten it right. Lewis got it half right. So a lot of people are saying gut shots, back to flush draws. So the easiest way to know what hands to check raise bluff with is to match cards. Okay? Card matching. So if we're check raising pocket sixes for a bluff, what hands match with sixes to bluff with? A pair of sixes. So a lot of our bluffs are probably going to come from a pair of sixes, I'll, I'll, I'll imagine. We'll get to that. So um, are we going to fold any top pair, ace, queen, six, rainbow? Are we folding any top pair? So this is our two pairs here. Check queen, six, we, we check raise two, son. Are we going to fold any ace, x here on ace, queen, six, rainbow? So we folded it on the ace, king, jack with a flush draw. Are we going to fold any... Um, Top pair on ace queen six to a big bet. So now some people are saying, now it's a mix of answers. <laughs> I got you guys thinking too much now. Uh, so on this rainbow board, we're not going to fold any ace x hands. And the reason on the rainbow board we're not going to fold, first it's a six instead of a jack. So ace queen six is not as bad for us as ace, queen, ace king jack. Um, that's number one. Number two, there's no flush draw. So our ace-x hands have a lot more equity because they can't get sucked out on by a flush draw. Yes, this is to a big bet. Uh, we don't have any under pairs. We don't have, are we folding any queen x on the flop? Any queen x are we folding? So it's 50-50, yes and no. Give me some reasons why. Most people are saying, half the people are saying, yes, we fold some queen X, half the people are saying no. What are you guys doing with uh, queen 10 of hearts? Queen 10 of hearts, what are we doing? Most people are saying call. Yeah, we're folding a lot of our queen X here. So if you see here, we're folding like um, half of our queens on this board. So um, queen 10 of hearts is a pure fold. Uh, we only call these queen X's with backdoor flush draws, basically. So these are all just with backdoor flush draws, pretty much just folding the ones with flush uh, with hearts. And then if you look here, like queen jack off, just pure folding. Um, all right, be honest with yourself. I'll be honest, I was not before I studied this for like three hours yesterday. I would never have folded queen jack off suit here to a two thirds pot bet on ace queen six rainbow. Are you guys folding queen jack off here to a two thirds pot bet on ace queen six rainbow? I wasn't, I was calling, no. So, all right, every single person in the chat, I wanna, I wanna read some stuff for exploits. So how I use this now in my game to incorporate exploits. Every single one of you said you would call two-thirds pot bet with queen jack on ace queen six, okay? What should your adjustment be knowing that and seeing this simulation from the solver? What should your adjustment and exploit be from the imposition player? There should be two main exploits you should use. What are the two main exploits you should use as the imposition player when you're the under-the-gun player here facing the big blind? So a lot of people are saying bet bigger. So I would agree with that. So bet bigger uh, with the stronger parts of your range. I would agree with that. And there's one other one that's a little harder to figure out. There's one more big exploit. There you go, Colin got it. Let's see if anyone else can get it. Colin Dewar got it correctly. Oh, some people are saying overvalue bad aces, value bet thinner with top pair, bet more aces, bet smaller with the overcard. It doesn't have anything to do with the flop. 
bit big for a bluff as well. So I would not bet big for a bluff as well because people aren't folding as much. There you go. Alexander got it. Although I, I'm going to make a tweak to your exploit, Alexander. So Alexander said, use bigger sizes with value and triple off more. I would say double barrel more. All right. If our opponents are coming to the turn with every single queen X on this ace queen six board. Okay. First, we should bet bigger on the flop. And then what should we start doing on the turn? P.O. Solver is going to start. Like we bet, they call. Turn is like the three of hearts. They check. We're only betting half the time here. What should our barrel frequency do? What should we be? Should we be bluffing more or less than this with our exploit? That if we know that out of positions coming to the turn with more queen x than they should. Correct. Most of you are right. We should bluff way more. We should bluff more on the turn because they're coming to the turn with way too weak of a range. They're, that's why we're folding queen jack on the flop. You guys might get away with calling queen jack because we're not getting bluffed enough um, on later streets. But like, um, as on the turn, we should bluff a lot more because on the turn, they're going to start folding a lot more queen x. Or on the river, they're, they're coming to the turn with too weak of a range. So I would say we should start double barreling more. Um. That's going on there. Let's go back here. So playing the term, we're focusing still on flat play mostly here. So we're not going to go into the, the deep dive on the turn play stuff yet. That's going to be for a different webinar because we're almost done here. We're already going over a little bit. Um, what else here? Um, pocket fives and deuces, just pure folding. Oh, third pair. This is what I want to talk about. So 6x now, we're just pretty much pure folding on this board. Ace, queen, six, rainbow. We're still just folding a lot of our 6x hands. And then besides these ones with the flush draw, some of these ones with the backdoor flush draw, we're starting to check raise. So remember I said we're going to match our cards. So we're doing a little bit of check raise bluffing here with some of these 6x hands. Um, yeah. Even the hand like King-10 is folding some of the times. I'm never really, um So, I mean, the main gist of, and then let's look really quick versus small bet, what's happening. Uh, small bet here, uh, top pair, under pair, second pair. We're still folding some queen X to a small bet. It's pretty crazy. Like queen-10, even to a one-third pop bet, is just mixing fold on this board. It's so crazy. I would never have folded this. What does match our cards mean? So what hands were we check raising for value? We were check raising queen six suited and pocket sixes. So on ace queen six. So the easiest way to figure out what hands you kind of want to bluff with is to use the same type of cards in your bluffs. So if we're check raising with pocket sixes for value, it makes sense to check raise with like a pair of sixes as a bluff. So a hand like six, five suited, for example. And so we're matching, we want to have kind of the same cards that we're bluffing with as we're value betting with. That's why you bluff a lot with the ace of spades on a three spade board is because a lot of your value bets are going to be from the ace of spades with another spade in your hand. Would you fold queen jack with a backdoor flush draw on the flop? No, I'm not. Uh, like queen jack of hearts here is even folding. Like we're still folding so much queen X, even to a small bet. It's so crazy. We're folding six X. Look at all the six X we're folding to a small bet. Pocket jacks, pure fold to a small bet. Like, this is pretty insane. Like, no one's making a mistake versus small bet. They're calling too much. So, like, oh, this is so crazy. 10-6 like, of hearts, just pure hits the muck. 10-6 of clubs. King-6 of clubs is just folding a lot. So crazy. All right. Um... Yeah, I tell you guys to call all the time, right? Yeah. Set you guys up for today. Told you guys to be calling stations, and then I threw this at you. So, and then we can look here. We'll look at ace-queen-6 versus button really quick. Why would jack-6-2 to be a raise, check-raise, and 7 6 to be a call? It has to do with blockers. It just has to do with how they're bluffing on the flop, so I'm not going to get too much into that today. Uh, where are we looking at here? 
Um, we already looked at that versus button. Oh, that, that's the what I wanted. Sorry. Uh, we wanted uh, ace, queen, six, rainbow. So now, uh, now the in position player mostly just uses the small sizing from the button. Why is the imposition using a large sizing a lot from under the gun? Why do they get a bet big 60% of the time from under the gun? And why do they only use the small bet from the button? Yep, they have what the, it all has to do with the, their range, and they just pick up a bunch of junk. You can't bet large a lot when, when you have 10 five suited in your range and nine five suited in your range. It has to do not as much with like they still have all the strong hands, pocket queens, but they also have six three suited. They just have a bunch of shit in their range, so they can't um, bet large when they have all that um, weak stuff. There are a lot of boards that you bet large, but if you want to bet all your hands, you can't do that. So uh, versus a small bet, we can look here really quick, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, obviously, we're never folding an ace. We actually check raise a lot of our ace x now versus button. Uh, we never fold a queen versus the button. We never fold a six versus the button. So on this rainbow board, we never fold. Uh, now we don't ever get to fold a six. And if you see here again, we start to check raise a lot of our six x. So on these rainbow boards, we don't have a lot of draws. You see a lot of these check raises with bottom pair. Still have to call it deuces here. It's pretty crazy. People are overfolding there. Have to call it deuces. Um, nothing crazy there. Still have to call it some king highs, backdoor flush draws. So much easier versus the button. Less opportunity for them to overfold. Or sorry, more opportunity for the overfold. They have to call defend a lot wider. So plus this is versus a small bet. This is versus the 33%. Versus this is versus a um, um, that we mostly they were looking at like a big bet here. So, all right. Any questions before we wrap this up? So this was a. Um, I mean, I spent a lot of time looking at this yesterday. I learned a lot. Um, definitely, I was calling too much versus early position from the big blind. I think I fixed a lot of leaks in my game. Hopefully, I fixed a lot of leaks in your game. Next week, what we're going to do is kind of put it all together for the last two weeks. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to filter my database for hands versus button versus under the gun and versus button. And we're just going to go through as many hands as we can. We'll use PO solver. We'll look up Sims and we're just going to try to put everything together into practice. Now um, looking at these big blind defense spots. Can you explain all the columns in the Excel sheet? Um, I'm not going to do it right now. If you look at my previous webinars, I've done it, but it's just the frequencies. It's an aggregated report of all the different flops and the frequencies. It's just taking the data from PO Solver and putting it into a spreadsheet form. So I'll probably do a whole webinar on aggregated reports sometimes. Welcome to PC Pro, Liam. All right, guys. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Um, I will see you guys next week. It's going to be the earlier time again. Um, actually, uh, keep an eye out. Next week's webinar might move days. It might be on Tuesday. I have to look. So keep an eye out in terms of when the webinar is next week um, because I probably can't do it this time on next week on Wednesday. So all right, guys. I'll see you guys next week.